Episode number 54. I'm your host for today. I'm Charlie. And joining me today is the co-host, Daniel Anthony. Hello, Hi, Daniel. Charlie. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Okay, how was your day? Oh, the usual day. I'm grumpy as usual. <laughs> also joining us today is uh, Norman Senzo. Hello, Norman. Hello. I'm not on my game. I forgot to turn my Skype to Do Not Disturb. Oh, it's okay. Today is going to be extra special because we have not one. But we have two guests. Uh, first up is Mike Greywolf. Hello, Mike. Hey, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Hi. How was your day today? It was fine. <laughs> it's a fine day here in Brazil. All right. Wait, give me a second. Give me a second. You just started your day, right? Uh, yeah, it's noon, right? It's half past noon here. Yeah. Ah. We're almost ending our day. <laughs> <laughs> um. We're practically in opposite sides of the world. I'm in Brazil, in Brazil. Yeah, oh, boy. I'm from Portugal. I I came to work here, so. Oh, it's... you're Portuguese. Yes, I'm Portuguese. Wow. And moving <laughs> on, um, we have Olga Star joining us today. Hello, Olga. Hello. Hi. How have you been today? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for asking. Okay. So now, if uh, you are wondering what this podcast is all about today, it's going to be a little bit of a different situation because we are going to talk. More about video games. Yay. I'm sure every one of you like video games. Don't you guys? I love games. I'm terrible at them, but I like them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I love video games. Video games are the best. I've been playing video games since I was six. Oh, same here, All man. All of us have, have we? Yep, same here. <laughs> at six. <laughs> yeah, at six I've been playing since I could hold a controller or a joystick, so, yeah. <laughs> That's a true gamer there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The earliest console I had was the Nintendo, and that was, oh, I don't know, I think I was six or something as well. So before we start off the podcast for today, we're going to have to ask our guest the four basic questions. So, Mike, can you please tell us, who is your favorite pony? My favorite pony, uh, that's a tie between Twilight Sparkle and Fluttershy. It really depends on my mood, because uh, when I'm feeling stressed out, it's, it would be good to, to have Fluttershy by my side, I think, because of her soothing demeanor and and the way she talks is just melts me right away. But if I want a challenge, something to challenge me, something someone to talk with, I would like to have Twilight because she is the smartest pony, of course. And to have a decent conversation of with her, I, I'm sure that it would be awesome. You know, right. I thought it would be the opposite because if I was stressed out, I would like to be with Twilight because she likes to stress out. She stresses out a lot as well. <laughs> and Fluttershy can put up a fight with you. <laughs> I think that this... I think it's more of... Um, how do you say? Personal preferences more to, towards. Because <clears throat> Fluttershy, Twilight Sparkle, mm, both are kind of like quiet in their own way. No, Twilight mm-hmm. is verbal. Very verbal. Mm. All right. Well, I, I, I love every pony, to tell the truth, except except for one. There's th- one pony that I can't stand from the main six, that's Rainbow Dash. Oh, <laughs> now you're just going after those Rainbow Dash fans out there. <laughs> well, that's a risk I have to take. I have to be honest. Right. Oh, Moving boy. on, uh, may we know what is your favorite episode? My favorite episode, curiously, is an episode that doesn't have any of my favorite ponies starring in it. Uh, well, as main characters, at least. And that would be Suited for Success from Season 1. A rarity episode. Rarity episodes, when well written, in my opinion, are the best episodes. Because the rarity is a great character when she's well written. It's, it's probably the best character, character-wise... Uh, regarding being a complete character, I think rarity is incredible. Uh, the problem is that, that he's, she's flanderized, do you know that term? Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. flanderized all too often. She's reduced very often to her more, most basic characteristics. 
uh, to her uh, stereotypical self. Yes. But when she even has a complete character, she's she's really incredible. And I love that episode because it's a very adult adult episode. It, it has no violence, but is is probably the most adult car- uh, episode in the whole show in the whole season in the whole show. So f- that's a, that's a part. very interesting uh, choice. Tell- I have to agree, I have to agree. Industrialization. It's not about industrialization, in my opinion. It's about uh, creative work and the relationship between a worker and uh, a creative worker and the people who are there. Who are not who sure with what they want and they don't know what they want. They don't know what they want. It's something that people like artists, web designers, uh, people who, who do creative work all can relate with. With that episode, because it's something that happened. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> okay, the next question: How did you first hear about the show, My Little Pony: Friendship Is Magic? Have I told you how how old I am? I haven't. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, you told yet. me, but you haven't told the rest of them yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seven years old, so I'm a, an old school nerd. So <laughs> Not there are older nerds than me, of course. But uh, I was a nerd already in the 80s. So, uh, and I, I was a kid in the 80s. And I, I watched the first generation My Little Pony show. And I liked it. Oh, oh. okay. That's interesting. So, wait, uh, uh, I didn't quite hear you. You said 27 or 37? 37. 37. 37. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I actually heard 7. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah. connection. Yeah. I really. I like that show because, well, it was a girly show. So it's not, it's not as girly um, as people give it credit for. I think it's, it's more like uh, it's kiddy. Well, it's a little juvenile. It's a little basic for today's standards, but mm-hmm. it was something that was uh, fun, relaxing, cute, and fun. And I, I'm a sucker for cute stuff. I see cute stuff. I get, uh, I get crazy. Okay, okay, yeah. cool, cool. So, so it was a cute show back then, and currently in the new generation, you've decided to hop on because it's also cute right now. I, I had some kind of nostalgia, for it. Oh. and one day I was browsing through the internet, and I was going through a, a site. I don't know if you know in a site called the Daily, the Daily What. The Daily What. Yes, yeah, I've heard of it. Heard of it. Yes. Uh, and uh, I was going through it. The, had all kinds of funny news and meme pictures and, and stuff. There was this picture that uh, compared pony, compared new the generation for ponies mm-hmm. with uh, <coughs> Dungeons and Dragons alignments. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, why? <laughs> like lawful evil, lawful good kind of thing. Yeah, oh, it, that. But it was changed to to show them as um, lawful girly, lawful boyish. <laughs> so, oh boy! Uh, this is cute. This is so cute. What is this? And I had no and hunt for what it was. This was about uh, 2011. <laughs> oh, okay. all right. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay. To, to see what it was, and I found out about the show. I watched the first ep- the first few, few episodes right there and then, and I fell in love with it, so that's that. Wow, that's a great story. Actually, it shares along with a lot of us, because most of us found the show via internet memes and things like that. Now we have to move on to the next question. What do your friends and family think for your love of the show? Uh, regarding my friends, uh, my friends, uh, I left them all in Portugal when I Oh. Oh. <laughs> I still have been able to I've been here in Brazil for nine, about nine months now but, and I haven't been able to make any friends here oh. it's been real hard but um, my friends in Portugal I can say that uh, almost all of them became fans of I was the evangelist <laughs> oh, yeah man everybody the good the evangelist <laughs> Mm. I mean, I have a friend in Portugal. I just told her about the show, and she was like, "Okay, I'll give it a shot." And she started drawing stuff on her DeviantArt the next day. <laughs> awesome. Slowly, slowly. I'm not saying Portugal Portuguese people are like you know easily influenced or anything, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Many of my friends became fans after that. Big fans. Some of them are big fans. Uh, regarding my family, well, they accepted it. 
parts they 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 don't share it but they 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 know I'm a nerd they know I have the kind of unusual stuff and they accept it so I've been having no problems from them but they accept it I even gave the address to my deviant art gallery that's very risky to no uh, okay <laughs> I didn't know that and that's uh, that thank you very much Mike uh, for answering our questions uh, now uh, we will pass on the time for to Orca to ask the four same basic questions Orca who's your favorite pony uh, well, it's uh, it's a tie between Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie. Twilight oh. because uh, because she's uh, she's the nerd. She's someone I can kind of relate to. She's uh, she's the main character. Well, that's not a very good reason for having a favorite, but <laughs> still, uh, I just like her. She, the word adorable is oh, thrown right. up a lot about Twilight, and that that's, uh, that describes her well, I think. And uh, Pinkie Pie, because you just never know what she's going to do. She, she's just random and fun, and she's just some someone I would you would probably like to meet, but maybe not spend uh, very much time with. But she's really fun. <laughs> well, okay, that's really an interesting choice between two ponies for both of our guests today. Okay, next question is, which is your favorite episode? Well, my favorite episode actually does star my two most favorite ponies. It would be, have to be, it's about time. It's about <laughs> with Twilight and Pinkie Pie. And uh, it's basically because, well, it's a time travel episode. I'm a, I'm a sci-fi nerd. I, I read a lot of sci-fi books and uh, watch sci-fi movies and TV series. And seeing that kind of, well, it's not, sci- it's magic in, of course, My Little Pony, it's not science fiction, but it's still that kind of same kind of plot that you see a lot of in a lot of TV series and a lot of books. So it was just really fun seeing that kind of stuff in My Little Pony. And of course, all the interactions between Twilight and Pinkie Pie, it's just, just a great episode. I assume you're experience in that one. One of my top as well. All right, so can you please tell us how do you first hear about the show? It was in 2011, too, I think. Uh, I, I browsed a uh, gaming blog called Kotaku. Have you heard about that? Yes, yeah, it's kind yes, of popular. I it's have. really popular. Red. And they had a link to, uh, to a mashup called Ponycraft 2, which was <laughs> a mashup of uh, the StarCraft 2 trailer with the uh, Little Pony footage. <laughs> right. And it was a great mashup. I mean, that was the first time I actually saw saw the show or clips of it I it just, it just seemed interesting but obviously I thought that it would, it would be the kind of uh, stupid girly thing that all the uh, other My Little Pony shows were before it but then for some reason I ended up on YouTube uh, watching the first episode and just loving it and watching the second one and the third one and the fourth one you know how it goes <laughs> yeah so we all do for some reason yeah. we end up there <laughs> yeah so yeah that's, that's when I became a fan. And this was, I think the first season was around halfway through at that point. And uh, I just caught up right away, watched all the episodes that had, that had come out. And then I found the fandom and yeah, I was, I was a fan. All right, awesome. Your fourth question is, uh, what do your friends and family think of your love for the show? Well, my family actually doesn't know that I'm a fan of the show. Oh. Uh, Secret they do, Yeah. I guess. Uh, they do, like Mike, they do know that I'm a nerd and I like all this kind of unusual stuff, but it just hasn't come up in any, any conversations. My little pony specifically hasn't come up. But uh, my friends do know and they they are not fans of the show, even though I've tried to get them to watch it. They're, they're just not into this kind of stuff, unfortunately. But they make kind of like light-hearted, good-hearted fun about it sometimes, but they yeah, accept it, and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's good fun. True. All right. It's good to know. Okay, thank you, Mike and Orca, for answering our four basic questions. Now we know our guests a little bit better. So next, we shall move on to housekeeping. Norman Senzo, why don't you take housekeeping today? <laughs> In today's housekeeping is... Nothing, because we got nothing. Yeah, 
<laughs> awkward silence day was for nothing. Now move on. <laughs> We've covered the housekeeping in the last episode. And so, so and I get it. Record we did it in three seconds. All right. <laughs> Not ten seconds flat. How about news time? I'll take the first news topic for today. In today's news time, we have the complete transcript for season one to season three available. Links can be found in the show notes. Have you ever wondered how a My Little Pony Friendship is Magic script looks like? If you think the answer is yes, we have the closest thing to an official script you can find. Thanks to the diligent work of one named Alan Beck, he has transcribed all of seasons 1, 2, and 3. But what makes this script different from the MLP Waiki is he has included all the camera motion, scene descriptions, and fades in it. If you ever wanted to create your own script, this is a good reference to learn from. Again, the links can be found in the show notes. So, guys, what do you think of this uh, MLP script from season 1 to season 3? I don't know. Why don't we ask Dan? He's the script writer here. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love scripts. This is really a great effort because I never thought that anyone would actually write scripts and dictate, nah, not dictate, sorry, um, transcribe the camera movements for a cartoon. This is the first time I've ever seen something like this. It's pretty unique, I think. Um, and the time and effort it takes to get, get this thing done shows a lot of dedication on his part. Definitely, definitely. And half the time when I'm hearing it, I mean, the, the gift of my Little Pony is that they have good voice actors who have good diction, unlike, you know, some other cheaper cartoons where they talk so fast that you can't hear what they're saying. Pinkie Pie can talk like an express train, you understand every single word. <laughs> True that. Um, Mike, what do you think of uh, scripts? I'm sure you've worked a little bit on those before. I don't know if you have uh, made it clear to your public why you have invited us in, in the first place, me and Orca, uh, because of the game, you know. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, we had been developing for uh, about a year or s- and something. We were developing a pony game uh, based on the um, on My Little Pony, uh, and um, the kind of game that we were uh, developing was an adventure game, the spirit of old Lucas Arts and Sierra games, yes. because. Uh, me and Arca and uh, also the, the other people who were involved in the project, such uh, as our friend Timo from, Ger- <coughs> Timo from Germany, who were fans of such adventure games. And that, th- those games are very script-heavy, as you know. Yes, definitely. Very true, very mm-hmm. true. Uh, and um, you might want to ask Orca about that, because he was the one that wrote all the scripts f- for for. The games, we we got to release uh, a proof of concept demo demo for, the, for this game. I don't know if you got to play it. And Orca was the one behind who wrote it all, who wrote the dialogue and the the actions for the police. So he does know. He is a he's a scribe by for, by profession. He, so he should be able to answer you about that. The the the, the closer I have done to write something like a script was um, for that game I was doing the the storyboard for the introduction but that uh, that part we never got to to really program that part because of other issues Uh, and so it just uh, stayed on the paper it never got to be really made you may want to ask uh, Orca about scripting, though. Okay, right. We should pass on the time to Orca to tell us more about how scripts are made in this game. Yeah, I knew, I knew Mike would do this to me. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, looking at these scripts for the show, these are much more de- detailed than anything I came up with for the uh, for the game. I mean, the amount of work that has gone into these is really quite amazing. Yeah, they look like really, really detailed scripts. And uh, like Mike said, I did some. I wrote all the scripts for our game the, with dialogue and uh, all the uh, actions and uh, camera movements, if, the, if we had any. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, in the type of game we were making, we didn't really have the, uh, the uh, tools to use many camera movements and all these kinds of. Uh, really complex actions and animations but yeah it was basically it was script, script writing so true so basically you guys did the minimum amount of work that 
um, this guy did for his scripting, right? Well, this is a, a lot more work than one game. I mean, I mean three seasons of uh, and all the actions and all all the uh, camera movements transcribed like this. This is a lot more work than we ever did for the game, so it's pretty impressive. True, true. <laughs> But it's a bit different because uh, in the game you have all these branching paths that yeah, you have yeah, that's true. to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every choice of dialogue must be scripted out <laughs> and uh, it must be detailed how it all interacts in, in terms uh, of uh, this leads to this and that that thing comes before before that and that line is only spoken if this was done before uh, it's kind of complex what this guy di did was basically describing the episodes in detail uh, to the to, to the camera level but we had to create something that could be translated into an interactive experience so it's kind of a different work uh, and it's uh, Harker knows that it's quite hard we have we, we've had quite a few discussions about this um, in the time that we were making the game mm -hmm. uh, so we can appreciate the work but it's kind of um, writing a song writing uh, a song partiture by ear so instead of creating an original it's interesting uh, but I give more value to fan, fan fiction writers if a fan fiction writer is a, fa a, a good writer and uh, he creates something original I give it more value than something just like a, a transcribed script I would agree because if you think about it, if you want to make a game, there are multiple aspects of creativity which you need to apply. For one thing, there's programming, there's artwork, there's dialogue, and yes, there's script as well. So it's really a mishmash of different uh, creative processes going on when, when making a game when you compare to just uh, uh, transcribing something in detail to the camera level. That's absolutely true. Right. I would uh, I'd still say that there's the transcribing all three seasons of the show that's a great resource for yes. someone who's, uh, who wants to take a look at scripts how they're written and, and get some ideas on how to write be the, be the game or a, on a or an animation fan animation or something like that it's a great resource though i totally agree with that and i have already downloaded all three in for, just for that purpose <laughs> Uh, let's move on. It's a great reference for people in production. Okay. Yeah. So that's for transcripts. Transcripts are... Magic. Magic. <laughs> transcripts are hard. They're hard, but yeah. They, they are great resources, we have already known. I mean, it's good that they are fan fictions and not phone calls or something <laughs> like that. I think fan fictions are pretty percent cooler. Indeed, I love fan fiction. You want a challenge? Transcribe our what episode of the MBS show. Oh god, no. Next up, we have a different news topic. Why don't I pass this news topic to Dan? Okay, Would you like to take it? Not really, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then. So, we're going to get more pony figures from Funko. Last week, we mentioned that Funko were going to release another two sets of vinyl pony figures in June. Unfortunately, we're not going to reveal who it is this week because we still don't know. Oh, we do, we do. Wait, so around, we? No, no, no. No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> at around the same time, Funko is also going to release a new set of figures under their pop line. So what's the difference between vinyl ponies and pop ponies? Well, the vinyl ponies are show accurate, made of vinyl, and are proposed standing 6 inches tall. While the pop ponies are, as they would like to cite, cuter, and post sitting down approximately 4 inches tall. The price of a vinyl pony can range from twelve ninety nine US dollars to sixteen fifty US dollars, while pop ponies will start at nine ninety nine and higher. Links and pictures can be found in the show notes. Note that the MBS show is not responsible for your reactions. Oh boy. I think these looks like babies actually. I'm looking at the picture right now. They kind of look like pony babies. I kind of want them and it's cheap. And I, I hear Smite in Dan's voice. He doesn't like it. You see, the last time they tried to make something cute, cuter, that happened with G3.5. Oh no! Oh God! Yeah, this but this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but these are figures from uh, Funko, and Funko does this kind of figures with other products too, like their Marvel line or their 
I'm, I'm trying a Batman yeah, Mar- one. Marvel isn't cute to begin with. Yeah, yeah but the thing is... Mr. Magic's already adorable. Don't double it and this kind of doubling uh, uh, cancels each other out. You don't like this? No, I don't. Really, no? I'm indifferent to it. I'll say, wait until the final product comes up and then we can judge on that. Yeah. Even creepy to an extent. <laughs> I, I kind of like vinyl. Scratch. But she's got the glasses on. She's kind of price. <laughs> yeah, I also like derpy, but hey... Um, Personal, uh, personal preference, personal preference. I think you're right. The vinyl, vinyl actually looks the best. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of like them actually, but uh, I'll reserve judgment when I see see the actual toys. I mean, these are just pictures. What do the actual toys look like? That's what I want to know. Mm, true, true. I think they look great. I think they're cuter as heck. Um, the vinyl ones are are really the ones to choose for for people who want to have. The ponies oh, yes. from the show on your yes. desk, but these ones are cute as heck. Uh, I love them. Oh, right. Indeed. Can't wait to grab my hands on them all. <laughs> it looks better than the pen drives we covered last week. Oh, yes, indeed. Memo Co. ones. Yeah. All right. Okay, moving on to the third news topic. We have a comparison of the McDonald's, Burger King, and Hasbro pony toys. As some of you might know, Burger King Germany gave us pony toys with every kid's meal in their recent promotion. Someone has lined up all three toys and did a visual comparison of all, of all the toys. At first glance, the notable differences are obvious. The McDonald pony has a hard mane, and, and while it has a brushable tail, the Burger King pony has a hard mane, tail, and a hot... <coughs> and the Hasbro pony has a brushable mane and tail. Pictures can be found in the show notes. So, guys, looking at the picture, what's your verdict? Which is best? I think the burger, the burger King one is definitely the, the best. I would agree with that. What do you? What do the rest of you guys think? The Burger King one looks like the fun, cool vinyl pony. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that's the best as well? Yeah. <laughs> Let me say that um, I've had news from my friends in Portugal, and they told me that Burger King is distributing those pony, those toys there as well, and I hate them right now. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I am so jelly, uh, man. But uh, the Burger King toys toy looks really nice. But um, if we're going for show accurate ponies. The ones from Funko are really better. I have the Derpy from Funko. I'm lucky enough to to have been gifted one of those. And she looks really awesome. The Burger King one looks great, uh, but it doesn't seem to be as... It seems to be a little flimsier, and it's um, almost certainly not as heavy as the ones from Funko. Yeah. Um, McDonald went for the cheap. I have all the McDonald toys and they're cheap, 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 cheap. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, the thing is, <laughs> Mike, uh, the thing is, they're a fast food chain and they do stuff cheap, so don't expect high quality. <laughs> so, uh, how about yeah, the mains? How do you all like the mains? Uh, the mains, the one for the, the for the shy that I'm looking at, at the picture, uh, the Burger King one looks fine. People give the the brushables from Hasbro bad rap. Uh, of course, they've been developed for little girls who like brushing hair, uh, who want to fall into that girly stereotype of, oh, I like to brush your hair, and they like to brush the little boy's hair. I can tell you something about this. It's actually kind of soothing to, to brush a little pony's hair. <laughs> very true. Very, very true. No comment on that, man. Um, <laughs> and there's, there's a whole a whole fandom segment that is dedicated to making the brushables mains look like a show mains. Oh, and yeah. I find yes. that really, really, really admirable. Uh, to make that mass of nylon hair look anything, anything like the the crazy hairstyles that we see on the show oh, yeah. is nothing less than a miracle. And so there's a place for that, and there, there's a use for the brushable ponies as girly as they may be. True, uh, true. I still give the, the upper hand for the to the Burger King pony, but the brushables... The brushables from Hasbro have their uses and can be, be used to do something interesting. Yeah, that's true. You can true. convert them to customs. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, but that's true. But uh, I remember uh, doing one of the pony from Hasbro. Like, I got a rarity and I wanted to do it show accurate. And I had to do a lot of things. I spent, like, 
almost an hour getting Rarity to look like in the show. Mm-hmm. And we had a previous guest who borrowed his sister's hairspray and did something with, uh, I think, Rainbow Dash. And his sister walks by and asks, what are you doing? And his response was, I'm styling the main, like in the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a really funny moment. You need to hear it from him. But the worst part is actually we had a listener who had his little sister pick up one of the pony toys from his room because, well, she liked it. And she cut off the mane with a scissor saying it'll grow back. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that guy just, he couldn't speak for the whole night. Wow. Uh, you'll have to tell us later, man. Who is yeah, he? and uh, I like the brushable mane as well. And I keep one in my car. I keep the McDonald's Pinkie Pie in my car. It's fun to brush in traffic jams. Calm me down because traffic can piss you off so much. <laughs> so let's move on. All right. So moving on to the next topic, it's guest time. And today's guest, we have two guests today. As you have already heard from earlier, it's Mike Greywolf and Orchestra. Who are these people? Mike. Why don't you start off and uh, tell tell the audience what is it that you actually do? My internet handle is Mike Greywolf. My name is João. I'm uh, from Portugal. Uh, I'm currently living in Brazil. I'm a big pony fan, and uh, my claim to fame in the pony community is having been the programmer and the sprite artist for the Cutie Mark Crusade, the Dash of Adventure uh, game that was being developed, but is uh, currently no longer in active development. Uh, I'm also a very active fan artist right now, uh, and I'm trying to make it big in the, in the pony fan community with my art. So that is what, what I am right now. Uh, Professionally, I'm a database programmer. I was a, data, a database uh, administrator. Right now, I'm, I'm unemployed, but um, that only gives me more time to do pony art, so uh, uh, about yeah. that. More time for pony. That's great stuff. <laughs> so basically, right. you spend your days working on SQL and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, uh, when I was a database administrator... Uh, I used to do that, and I I kind of hated I kind of hated that. So <laughs> I hate it too. Uh, no worry. Pro- huh? I hate it too. <laughs> you do it too? Uh, well, for web program, for web design and stuff, yeah. Oh yeah. A little bit, and that little bit I hated already. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So Orca, what about you? Tell us who you are and what you do to the people who might not know you. Well, uh, my online handle is Orca Star, and uh, I'm actually from Finland. And uh, my claim to fame in the Brony fandom is that I was the writer of Cutie Mark Crusade, A Dash of Adventure. And uh, I, I also do some uh, fan art, but not much. But uh, I guess that's pretty much it. So basically you're the writer? You, you write the yeah. whole thing, you do the scenarios and stuff? And... Yeah, I came up with it. Well, the actual scenario was kind of a collaborative, collaborative effort. But when we established that, I wrote all the uh, dialogue, all the scenes, and I was basically the only writer on the game. <laughs> oh my, that can't be easy for you. Yeah, Actually, it, was a, it was a lot of work. Actually, if you think about it, it's the writing of the game uh, which has the key point, in, in, especially so that it's an adventure game, where most of the most of the appeal comes from the plot and thus uh, it comes from the writing itself. So to make the game complete and, and whole, it has got to have a good story, uh, an engaging plot, and, and that's where the, the writing comes in. Is that true? Yeah, that's definitely true. And the uh, another part that's challenging is writing in a way that uh, makes sense from a gameplay standpoint. You really have to tie the plot and the story into some kind of playable form. And that's a tough thing to do, and we've had quite a lot of debates about certain game mechanics, certain uh, stuff that was going to happen and how, how everyone, everything would work from a gameplay standpoint. So it's it's a challenge. Right, okay, that's cool. good to know. Right, so, Mike, can you tell us uh, who exactly are the people behind the game? Uh, Cutie Mark Crusade, A Dash of Adventure. Yes, the people uh, behind the game 
R, R K and me, plus uh, uh, a friend of ours, Timo from Germany, uh, who, who was the background artist and musician for the game. Uh, uh, I, did, I did the programming and puzzle designer. Yes, um, I did the programming and sprite art and animation, and uh, Orca was the writer. Also, Mark from the United States was our public relations person and uh, web writer who did our web updates and also had some input in, the la in a later phase into the, the whole creative process. Um, but the people who work on the game per se were, was at S3, me, Orca and Timo. It was a very small team. It was very enthusiastic at the beginning. So, and I'm happy to say that I became a better person for it. Uh, I learned a lot from them and from this project. So that's that. So to reiterate to our listeners out here, we are talking to Mike Greywolf, who is working as the programming lead of this game. And we are talking to Orchestra, who wrote the story along with the dialogue and documentation. And the third person, which unfortunately uh, couldn't join us for the interview, is uh, Timo, or Buffbuff, who is responsible for the puzzle design and also the music of the game. And background. Don't forget background. And the background. Right. Our next question to you guys is, what was the whole inspiration behind the game? It oh, began from the, basically, we have an IRC channel where we chat, and we one day we just began chatting about how we, all three of us, liked old-school LucasArts uh, adventure games. And somehow the topic came up that it would be cool if someone made a uh, pony adventure game. And for some reason decided, why don't we make a pony adventure game? And then we just started making it. Yeah, that's basically how it started. So from humble beginnings and a single IRC chat and some ideas thrown around and the game was born. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Awesome. that's awesome. So um, <laughs> I, I got a question here. Um, how did you guys all met because one is from Germany, one is from Portugal and one is from Finland. It's like um, covering all continents from the West. So how do you guys get together and decide that we want to do this? Magical IRC. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are all users of the NeoGAF uh, forums. The, I don't know if you know that, that those forums. It's a pretty high profile a gaming forum for uh, that is pretty well known in the, in the gaming industry. And we are all users of that forum. And we met as part of the sub-community of Pony fans in that, in that forum. When the, the show started getting popular among nerd circles, popular and unpopular because it's a very polarizing show, right? <laughs> yep. People started gathering together. People who admire the show started gathering together in, the, in that forum and starting uh, making, making threads about it. And not only, and uh, we ended up reaching the conclusion that we, we would like to get to know each other better, so we started making a chat room. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the Pony Gaff chat room, the Pony Gaff IRT channel, where we gather together together daily and we chat about not only pony but all, but all kinds of stuff and we, we get to know each other better and it was during these se chat sessions that we met and we found out that, that we had these tastes in common and came to decide to make this game wow right. that, that sounds so fun sounds very like what happened to a very very particular image board <laughs> <laughs> oh god it's, this is actually a very uh, wonderful thing to happen. It goes to show that uh, physical barriers uh, can be overcome easily by the wonders of the internet, online Indeed. chat rooms. And with an interest in the same particular subject, in this game, it's video. In, in, in this case, it's video games and ponies. <laughs> for a group of creative people to come together and basically create something wonderful. All right, our next question to you guys is: um, Mike, you've mentioned the game is no longer in active development. Uh, so, what is the current state of the game right now? It's in prolonged hiatus, but it's a complicated situation where we three have kind of moved on to other projects, even though we still have this big elephant in the room that is the game, we no longer have the, the drive being set. We as a unit, as, as a, a team, no longer have the drive to keep on doing it because there are some th there's other things that 
have our interest and have and consume our time right now. We would very much like to be eventually able to to finish this project because it's something that maybe some many people were expecting for and look, looking forward to. Uh, but if we, we can't make it fun and interesting for us without driving us crazy over scrabbles <laughs> and decisions and and stressing out over every little detail. If we can't make it fun for ourselves, then it, we feel that it's not worth it, I think. And um, recently, with this whole uh, fiasco about C and Ds, especially what happened to Main 6, has this affected your um, stance on pony gaming in a way? Not in my opinion. The way that it has affected our project was simply that it drove us to erase ourselves from the internet as much as possible. Because oh. even though we don't know if we are ever going to finish this or not, we don't want Hasbro to be the ones deciding that for us. We kind of went low profile and all development from now on, if there is, is we go back to it, is going to be made privately and probably secretly. Oh. Okay. All under closed doors right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There were some real-life issues with uh, especially Mike moving from Portugal to Brazil, which uh, made communication within the team quite a bit more challenging than it was when we were all living in Europe, pretty much close by time zones and stuff. It was much easier than... Yeah, other than that, Mike pretty much covered everything. Yeah. Great. Now the only Portuguese people I know are not in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my friend in Portugal, she's in Spain right now, so yeah. Spain is still in Europe, so that's close. That's close. It's close enough, but nobody's in Portugal. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, there is a great rivalry between Portuguese and Spanish. Did you know, did you know that? Uh, I kind uh, of do. Uh, I kind of do. There's currently a great rivalry between Malaysia and Philippines right now. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. Uh, Brazil and Argentina too. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> but Portugal has the ponies in Burger King. I, I think that it it may be going through all Europe right now. <laughs> all Burger King uh, uh, branches throughout Europe may be having the same promotions right now. I'm I so be jealous. Oh. Oh, because we, here Finland in Malaysia, doesn't have Burger King. Oh. <laughs> but here in Malaysia, we didn't get the second wave of uh, McDonald's pony toys. And if yeah. I'm not mistaken, uh, you guys in Brazil have the pony ice cream, right? Ice cream, I haven't seen it. Oh. I must confess. Oh. <laughs> I would totally have one, you know, if I found it. Yeah. In terms of merchandise, you guys actually have it good. Because mm. in Europe, or even in Brazil, I remember there's been plenty of random merch which just pop out of those stalls and, and things like that. So <laughs> we don't get that here. Okay. Okay, I'm sure if you guys like look for it, I'm sure you find lots of uh, random pony merch in, in your local shops. True, indeed. <laughs> Uh, it's all about hunting down pony. Moving <laughs> okay. on to the next question. Uh, you guys mentioned um, NeoGAF and subsequently the sub-community called uh, PonyGAF. Now, um, I might not know too much about all this, but from what I've seen, that community is actually pretty huge. Would you guys like to tell us a little bit more about it? It's uh, pretty much the biggest uh, gaming community on the web, I think. For okay. NeoGAF? It's a... NeoGAF yeah. oh. is uh, has almost a hundred thousand members right now. Uh, it's pretty huge, and and this taking into account that it's a closed community, it's um, it's almost a person to enter it has to wait for a long time. There's a, a waiting list to be a member of NeoGAF. Wow, to tell the truth. it's like entering uh, a nightclub, then a very expensive one. No, it's not very expensive, but they are very demanding with their members <laughs> because if you go out of li- out of line, out of line in there, um, you're banned. And if you're banned, it will be back to the <laughs> back line. to the waiting list <laughs> to Ooh, get in again, no and that's fun. something that people don't want to to be exposed to. But wow. it's um, a very high profile. Uh, gaming community in the internet there are, the there are many <laughs> uh, there are many industry industry figures well known industry industry figures in there um, like Jim Rossignol and people like that do you know of Hanny? I know of uh, Michael Pachter oh Michael the, Pachter the, the analyst he's a member of NeoGAF oh. um, do you know Annie? 
I do know uh, Michael Pachter and also some of the Western developers know them by name but don't know them personally. Phil Spector wasn't Phil Spector a member of New Gaff? Mm, not sure. No, no, no. Yeah. Phil Spector. And what's his name? The guy. Phil Harrison. Uh, no, Warren Spector. Mm. Uh, the um, the guy who, who created System Shock and Deus Ex. Oh, um, isn't he a member of Neo Gaff? I think he is. I'm, I'm actually not I'm sure. Not sure. Sure. But that, but, sure. but that, that tells us how popular NeoGAF is. So, um, yes. guys, I was browsing your DeviantArt and I noticed this. <laughs> well, I noticed a pony called... Um, not sure who is it, but I think she has the NeoGAF symbol. Uh, oh, and yes. Believe. Yeah, Believe. Yes, Believe. It's our muse. <laughs> yeah, and I, I noticed that you guys have pony gaff. What's that all about? PonyGaff is the, the gathering of all Pony fans in NeoGaff. How many uh, are there? We're, I would say about um, 50. Oh, what do okay. you think, Arga? Yeah, I think 50 sounds about right. I mean, around maybe 20 really active members, but overall 50. But obviously, there are more uh, more people on NeoGaff that uh, watch the show, are fans of the show, but maybe don't participate in the uh, in the sub community of PonyGaff. Oh, so um, PonyGaff is a sub community under NeoGaff, right? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Just like Pony yeah. Baru and Dad Baru. <laughs> we have um, our own, our own chat rooms, our own um, sync tube sessions, our, and um, we pre- pretty much keep to each other when. We try to see it as a gathering of friends, people who happen to, to like ponies and use that to to make their friendship with each other grow. And uh, a big element of PonyGaff right now is creating art, oh. because there are several people in there who would like to become better artists, me included, and we try to help each other, uh, giving tips and uh, suggestions to, to, to make our art improvements become faster. Oh, cool. So we have NeoGaff, who's, which is a big community that's talking about games, a subdivision mm-hmm. called PonyGaff, where fans of the show get together, and yeah. most of them are, are good in art. They come together, they create stuff, and uh, it just so happens mm-hmm. you guys came up with this game. Yes, and you mentioned you mentioned our our mascot Belle Eve, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. She was. She is our our um, our mascot. She was created by renowned fan artist John Hoseco. Oh, really? Now, so y- you guys yes. know JJ? Yes. Yeah, he's yes. Uh, he's actually on Neocap too. Oh, awesome! Wow. That's cool. <laughs> and he was for a, a, a quite a long time a, a regular visitor of the Pony Gaff chat, um, and he created Be- Belly for us. Uh, wow, that, that that is cool. That is cool. I I am jealous and, right now. <laughs> and uh, there was a an, a funny thread recently with someone asking what would uh, Neo Gaff, the whole forums mascot, be. NeoGaff's mask could be if there was one and everyone in almost everyone in PonyGaff's head it must be Believe <laughs> we tried to <laughs> we tried to set up Believe as the mask of PonyGaff even for the people who, they, who didn't like ponies oh, God. Uh, so it was a bit strollish but it was kind of funny but uh, if you want to know something John Hoseco was actually set for um, creating art for the for our game at one time, oh, but he, really? oh. yes, he, he was set to do the the dialogue portraits, but uh, unfortunately, he is not able. He was not able to do it because of being a he is a big time artist and he he does that art thing for a living and he had no he had no availability in the long term to to keep up with us so oh. that was scrapped that that kind of collaboration ended up being scrapped unfortunately oh, it's too bad he but was if part, he was he was there at the beginning of new uh, pony gaff right and new gaff 
because all of you were in this big community and when when the whole fandom started uh, you guys were all there right yes yes we all came from there so guys uh, you said you have this pony gaff community of 50 people right and let's say 20 active members right okay yeah yeah that's uh, that's about it i think Okay, so uh, do you guys do any weekly get-togethers where you play games with each other, either on the PlayStation or Xbox 360 or Steam? Do you guys do that? Yeah, we used to, uh, when uh, new episodes were coming out, we would always do a SyncTube session where we'd all watch the episode together and uh, sometimes after those sessions we would uh, get together to play some Team Fortress 2, for example. That was a lot of fun, yeah. Oh, cool. So, do you guys still do it to this day? Uh, between seasons, we do it less. Uh, we, when uh, before season three actually started, we did a kind of rewatch of seasons one and two. But now that seasons three season three is over, we haven't haven't really done it. But maybe it'll pick pick up again. Maybe we'll rewatch season three uh, soon. Oh, cool. It all depends on what we feel like doing at the moment. Uh, it's not something that that can be considered a duty from us to to stick to that regular schedule of watch an episode, game after. If, if, if we feel like it, if we're all tuned into it, we'll do it. But uh, normally we're we're up to chatting and we're up to make, doing art together and uh, exchanging impressions regarding yeah. our art. That, that's that's the current wave to tell you the truth I think oh. and the way Farker agrees with me yeah, it's pretty much moved on to the art aspect there's a lot of artists currently in, in the chat in the IRC chat so yeah it's moved on to that ah, so from gaming to art now oh okay that, that, that's an yeah, interesting it's, turnover <laughs> yeah it's pretty funny turnover events and it's a lot of creative aspects of the Brony fandom which we just don't know how to cover true 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 <gasps> That's why, and that's why they call it a phenomenon, because it's still quite unexplainable to today. So, guys, earlier on you mentioned that uh, John Joseco was part of uh, Neil Gaff and Pony Gaff in the beginning as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's also another guest which we've interviewed previously, um, Carl Payne of Equestria Daily. Are you guys familiar with this? Yes, yes, he, he's also um, a sporadic visitor. He's also a part of, your, of our community. We consider him a part of our community as well. Yes, and just recently I got to know that he actually he purchased the Lauren Faust paint original sketch of Twilight Sparkle. What? Yes, yes he did. He's rich, he's rich. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. If I remember right, that thing went for 6k, right? Uh, 6.9k, if I'm what? not mistaken. <laughs> the lucrative lives of the medical industry. <laughs> in the US, especially. Yes. Whoa. It was all in great effort because it was, all the proceeds went to charity and, and well, it's all for a good cause, really. Okay, I mean... It's, We're it's, proud of you, Galpain. <laughs> it's a noble cause, but wow. 6.9, ooh. Let's talk about games for a little bit because um, NeoGaf is all about games and PonyGaf is about pony games and also now recently Pony Art. Tell, tell me, guys, you mentioned earlier Lucas Art Adventure games. Can you name a few of your, your favorites? Okay, um, I can start. Some of my favorite adventure games are from Lucas Arts, such as uh, Day of the Tentacle. I'm sure Arca will mention that one as well. The Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis game that uh, should have been adapted into the fourth Indiana Jones movie, actually. Oh, that's, that's because so it's so cool. <laughs> um, and um, The Dig, also, it's a lesser oh. known. Yes, um, I know the dig. The dig was great. The dig, um, the Monkey Island games, of course. They're they're comedy gold, uh, and I love them to bits. Those are some of my my favorite adventure games. If we talk about other publishers, I must say I must talk about stuff like The Longest Journey and Broken Swords. Uh, games like that are, are are really in my memories as being lots of fun to play through because I I really like games as, as an experience and those games are great experiences from a story point of view. Actually, for every game you've mentioned, I've actually known all of them and I've played all of them as well. <laughs> Excellent. 
<laughs> These games are like um, part of our childhood, I must say, and um, they really gave us the, uh, the the humor in them. They've gave us uh, kind of like um, our, our own personality of uh, and our, of our humor and wit of how we are today. Well, guess what I'm saying is they they, they shape our way of uh, thinking, thinking, and also our way of uh, making jokes and things like that. Mm, <laughs> true, true. How, I... how about you, Orca? What are your favorite adventure games? Well, uh, Mike pretty much mentioned all of this. <laughs> all the old LucasArts games are absolutely amazing. And, well, one that Mike didn't mention that is pretty much my favorite of them all is Sam and Max Hit the Road. Oh, nice. Yeah, I yes, forgot about it. I play that too. Yeah. Hey, yeah, guys, that's um, amazing. And, one, and one game that's one game from LucasArts that's not really a comedy game is Full Throttle. Mm. All right. Also a very, very great adventure game. A bit short, but still absolutely yes. amazing. So guys, I uh, totally agree. That one was way too short. Talking about yeah. LucasArts games, um, have you guys played Grim Fandango? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. That was another great one. I unfortunately didn't have the the, the chance to play that one. It's uh, a real... What? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it, I promise. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Does Gold.com have it for sale? I, I, think, I think they should have good old games. I think they should have. <laughs> Talking about adventure games, do you know what? Uh, there's this new hotness right now. It's called The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I actually just played it recently. It was absolutely amazing. You should go play it right now. Yeah. Right. I didn't play. I didn't play that uh, regarding the new wave of the Telltale Studios oh. games. I didn't play Walking Dead, but I loved the, their Sam and Max games, and I also loved the, the Back to the Future series from them. Oh, right. It's very good also. Actually, they have ported the Back to the Future series uh, along with the Sam and Max series uh, to the mobile mobile uh, games, if I'm not mistaken. From what I, I see, remember, huh? they were available in the iOS uh, Telltale games, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're porting yeah. a lot of classic games to iOS and now Windows 8. Hmm. So there's actually a future for these older games in, in our current time. Tablets. True. And considering that I'm the youngest one on the show, I don't know more than half of what you're talking about. Same here. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 the street, I'm the Street Fighter I player here. <laughs> I don't know why what's going on. In the gaming community as a whole, there's been a lot of talk, I mean, for like, for two decades about how adventure games are dying and it's, mm. it's, it's a genre that's just doesn't have a place in modern gaming and it's, it's just so not true. I mean, all these games that are being ported, all these new games like The Walking Dead that are just winning all these Game of the Year awards and it's adventure gaming is uh, really making a comeback. Yeah, I mean, true. I mean, f- the way I like to enjoy my game is, um, certain games, is I, I like to hear the story, even though if it's super ludicrous like Metal Gear Solid 4. <laughs> yeah. That has a WTF moment with the story, but... Yeah, you 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 stick to it because hey, I want to hear what they're trying to tell me, the first time round, and then you just play the game, and the second time when you play it, you'll just skip everything. <laughs> That's the bad part about that one. Uh, but still, adventure games are fun. Like, I think the Japanese are still doing those kind of uh, point and click. Um, I wouldn't say point and click, but it's more of it's a very it's a very different formula for the Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The things they're pointing and clicking at <laughs> are not the same as the ones we like. <laughs> let's just let's just be clean here, man. I'm oh, talking no. about clean stuff. <laughs> I mean, is it something like Phoenix, right? Those kind of games? Yeah, I mean, those, those two. Those two are really good games. Phoenix, right? It's more of an interactive yes. novel, I would mm, say. It's actually a point yeah. and click. <laughs> it's a point and click, too, because you need to look for clues to uh, fulfill yeah, your... Yeah. Um, the two elements to it. One is the uh, entire um, the court case, and the other one is the uh, yeah looking for clues. So that part is it, it is point and click as well. Yeah, I mean I those games are fun. If you consider the latest game, uh, the the Ace Attorney Investigations games, mm. uh, the that let you move around the scenery, oh. and uh, and like the Phoenix Wrights, the the original Ace Attorney <laughs> games, which just presented you with a scenery and let yeah. you click around. The, the Ace Attorney Investigations that star 
games that star Miles Edgeworth <laughs> actually um, let you move around the scenery and are very reminiscent of uh, old adventure games. If you consider that, then yes, it's it's interesting. But it's also one of a kind. I, I don't think the Japanese have really a culture for that kind of games. Yeah, but I think right. the Japanese more look look to it as oh, this is interesting and new and fun. I like fun. You guys talk about uh, Phoenix Wright. Um, are you by chance familiar with the ponified version of the um, kind of like fan made movie called Turnabout Storm? Any of you yeah, guys? Yeah, that's that's about that's Storm is just yeah, that's great. one of them. Yeah. There's so many. Uh, I'm talking about the pony one, the one that had got um, the Phoenix four Wright. episodes out yeah. already. Phoenix Strike crossover with uh, My Little Pony. That's a good, yes. fun one. They have a few yeah, crossovers. Yeah, really well done. done. Yeah, true, yeah. true. In fanfic form, in animation form, in game form. Some of the games, they don't see the light of day. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because of time. Even... And there's a lot of issues, like... I don't have time, don't have this. I had a I had a nephew recently and I can't do this game because ah uh, nephew yeah. so many yes. games. No more time. Yes. I know true, that you I know that you <laughs> Alright. Okay, moving on to the next question. We would like to know if it's if you're okay with answering. Mike, what is it that you actually do outside of uh, pony related activities? Uh, as I already told earlier, uh, I used to be a database administrator when I was in Portugal. For family reasons, I have to move to I had to move to Brazil, and now I am currently unemployed. Uh, so my current profession profession is that I'm I, I'm I'm the I'm a parent of a, a kid of six years old. Oh, so my current okay. <laughs> Uh, and uh, he also likes ponies. His favorite uh-huh. is Rainbow Dash, which Yay. is actually my <laughs> <laughs> my wife is also a big brony. Oh, awesome! My, well, my wife. I am lucky enough to have a, a brony a brony wife. Uh, she does excellent uh, plushie dolls. Ooh. Plushie dolls! Oh, wow. great! Those things are in <laughs> high demand. Brony family. I can show some of them. Of course, there won't be the the the, the listeners won't be able to to see them. But uh, we can put them in can, our show notes if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me send you some links here. So, uh, speaking of um, all this, have you been to any Brony conventions before? Fortunately, not. The Brony community in Portugal decided to start having them exactly as I left. <laughs> there <So>. are conventions <laughs> in Portugal. <laughs> Not conventions, gatherings, meetups, uh, and stuff. Informal stuff. No, not, not people uh, reserving convention centers to to do to do organized to do organized events. It's just people meeting together to to celebrate to celebrate ponies. But um, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to go to any. If I was still in Portugal. Uh, I would probably be organizing them because um, before being a pony fan, I was a, a big anime fan, and uh, in Portugal, I I used to to organize anime conventions. Wow! Uh, wow! So, with emphasis on the gaming side, normally I was uh, responsible for the gaming section in conventions that uh, were organized. Uh, so, if I was still there right now, I'd, I would be organizing pony co- pony meetings, but unfortunately, it didn't pan out for me. So, I, I posted some links to my wife's work, if you want to, to give okay. your opinion on that. These are great, actually. Oh, my. <laughs> These are huge plushies, rarity and very punch. Wow, wow. they look great. <laughs> This uh, is pretty impressive, I must say. Wow. Uh, how much is it? <laughs> and is it for sale? <laughs> yeah, is it for sale? Uh, she, she used to make this under... Uh, and, and there are... She used to take orders for ponies, but she's not doing right now because she, she's been pretty busy with her, her work, so it, it hasn't been possible lately. Okay, cool, cool. Just asking because we're looking I for really plushies. Like Yes, 
I do too. So uh, we we heard about Portugal and uh, Brazil. So what about Finland? How is Finland like with the whole Brony community? What do you do? Do you uh, attend meetups? Do you try to start a meetup? I have actually been to two Brony meetups here in Finland, but I haven't really been in, into organizing them. Mm. But they actually the Finnish Brony community has a pretty big uh, convention plan for next year that I. Definitely, definitely check out. It's a pretty ambitious. They've rented out one of the biggest venues in Finland for it. So I'm not sure how how well they're going to do, but it's going to be interesting. Oh, cool! Uh, wow. Um, good good luck to you guys because with the whole current standing of conventions and <laughs> let's just not bring that up again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, have you been to Galacon or Buck? Actually, we we were discussing uh, last year about going to Bucks promote our game, but unfortunately, we couldn't uh, make it work. Uh, it would have been interesting, but unfortunately, real life issues got in the way. Yeah, too, too bad See, because it would be awesome. So that means that you guys actually never promoted the game behind a, a panel or anything before this. Nope. Mm-hmm. We. Nope. We have an app presence, we, not, we never. Um, we had an interview with the uh, Pony Goons, with the. Uh, what's the name of the site? Round Stable. Round Stable, right. My Little Pony News. Yes. We had an interview, we a written interview with them, but otherwise we never got to, um, to promote our um, game in real life. Well, some of, our, some of our trailers were also posted on EQD, so. And that's how people knew, knew about this stuff. On the game, I was wondering, is the engine or most of your work open to people to use if they want to start their own version? Our engine, our game engine was all uh, built from scratch in Python. In retrospect, I, I don't know. Yes. I don't know if that was the, the right choice, but I wanted to, I really wanted to to learn how to program in Python at the time, and it was a big challenge to to create such a complex game. Uh, and Python is a very easy language to learn. We, um, but yes, the game code is, is available to um, anyone who wants to read it and to learn from it, um, and even to use it in their own projects if they want. Uh, it, it can no, it probably is no longer very easy to obtain it online. I can provide it under request, of course, but uh, if anyone is hearing me and wants to, to look at what uh, a pony game source code looks like, they can just ask me and I'll give, it the, give them the source code. We only kept the art assets and the, the music assets to ourselves as, as our property mm. and we we like people not to, to copy them or to use them in other projects. But the source code is available to anyone. Okay. okay, so you've heard it, guys. The source code is available upon request. If I request it, i got no idea what I'd be doing with it. <laughs> <laughs> anybody who can program, anybody who can make stuff out of this, get to it. Um, another question, guys. Uh, how much pony merchandise um, do you have right now? I have quite a few pieces of pony merchandise. I have uh, about uh, 10 brushables. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Including the custom Valive brushable. Oh, all right. right. She's awesome and she's on my desk right now. Uh, I have one of those vinyl uh, vinyl ponies from uh, from Funko, all right? Yes. Is it, der- is it the Derpy yeah. Hoops one? The Derpy Hoops one. She's also on my desk besides Valive. Uh, I have uh, the first issue of the, the Mild which is awesome. Well, by the way, if anyone hearing hasn't read it yet, yet and is missing their weekly dose of pony, then they should come because it's truly great. I love it. Awesome. And um, I have uh, the um, the original Comic Con poster for, from season one standing behind me in the, on the wall. Oh. And of course, my some of my wife's pony plushies, right? <laughs> How did you Very get the Comic Con? Really jealous of all those good stuff. <laughs> How did you get the Comic Con poster? <laughs> that poster is so awesome. How did you get it? John Fonseca sent it to me. 
Ah. Wait, what? Yeah. I am full of the jellies right now. <laughs> uh, you, that time, he was still a regular visitor of the of our pony chat, and uh, he agreed. He offered himself to send those posters to most to most of the people in Ponygaf. So most many people in Ponygaf have that that poster, and it's all thanks to him. Uh, All right. Let's let's get away from the jelly. Orca, what about you? <laughs> well, un- unfortunately, I don't have quite as much pony merchandise. Uh, I have a uh, two, uh, no, three pony gaff t-shirts. Uh, pony gaff t-shirts, not oh. just pony t-shirts, but pony gaff t-shirts, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, one of uh, We Love Finds uh, t-shirts, and uh, as well as the uh, six, the main six in the. The blind back versions of those. Yeah, awesome. And, uh, it's, that's about it. Unfortunately, the, the right. uh, vinyl figures, the Funko ones, aren't very easy to come by here in Finland. But if they ever release those here or in Europe, so that uh, shipping costs are mm. kept down, I'll definitely buy at least oh. some of them. Okay. How have you ever considered trying to buy it from Hot Topic? Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have hot topic here, and the uh, shipping costs would be quite quite high. Mm. Yeah, it's not normal for moderate. <laughs> uh, unless you get like a promotional code or a discount, mm. then yeah, the shipping cost really really bites. Yeah, because I remember my first time buying the first two, the Derpy and Rainbow Dash. I think um, shipping costs cost about one. <laughs> Uh, I know um, shipping costs cost about two of those vinyls. So basically, <laughs> I'm paying for four vinyls, but receiving only two. Oh my! <laughs> Actually, okay. I think there's been uh, there's been some talk lately about some stores in Europe getting the uh, vinyl figures too. So maybe I'll be able to get them then. Wow! Awesome! Well, it's about time. Yeah, because <laughs> you, you you should get one of the vinyls because I I, I bet. Uh, Mikey can vouch for me that those vinyl oh, figures looks really good. Yes, yeah, they're they're amazing. I have uh, I have Derpy and I have also Fluttershy and Doctor Who's on the way. So no Rainbow Dash. Uh, I, no Rainbow Dash for your son. Uh, if you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Okay, guys. Looks like we are. Running out of questions here, but um, actually, we would like to know what was your first reaction when we invited you onto this show. I was really into the enthusiastic about it. I, I, I'm really kind of a frustrated, frustration, a frustration. Uh, I'm sorry, a frustrated attention horse. <laughs> <laughs> attention horse? Did, did you just make a pun? Could be. <laughs> oh boys. <laughs> And uh, I really get, like the attention that um, the, the, our projects, even though it's not no longer active, gets. And I, I think that um, people are, really ought to know more about it. It's fun to be able to talk to the to people around the world about this. So I was really looking forward to this. I'm very All happy right. to be here right now. Awesome. And you are. And you, Orca? Yeah, I was, uh, was pretty surprised because, uh, like Mike said, the. Uh, we haven't been actively developing the game for some time, and uh, it was kind of sad that we had to stop developing it. And so it was, it was a really nice, nice thing to get an invitation to this kind of show and like get an indication that at least there are people still out there who who were interested in the game and are still interested in it. So I still want it out, man. I yeah. still want you guys to work on it, man. See, we dug yeah. it up, so now it's your job to get it back. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it was uh, it was a real privilege to be on this show. So thanks yeah, for the, the privilege. Uh, the honor's ours oh. to to get to have yeah, you, awesome guys. Do you have any questions for us? Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> what are your favorite ponies? Oh. oh, favorite ponies. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll have to start. For you me, will be judged. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. I share the same sentiment as you. It is Fluttershy as number one and Twilight Sparkle number two. So, but I love every pony. So it, it's it's really difficult to, to. It's a really unfair question actually <laughs> for me personally because they're all nice. But if I had to choose, it has to be Fluttershy. <laughs> uh, this is easy for me. Yeah. 
My girl, man, my girl, Fluttershy. Always my girl. Tonight is Fluttershy's night. <laughs> yeah, man. That makes me the odd one out as you know. Not really. Answer first and then you'll know. I like Pinkie Pie. Yes. That's the right, that's the right answer. <laughs> yeah. So we know who's in second place. <laughs> that's the right one. <laughs> Other than that, do you have any other projects besides this, pos- this podcast? Uh, any other community projects uh, alongside this podcast? Just mm. curious. For me personally, I've been trying to get some... Uh, well, I'm trying to do some singing so that I could... Well, basically trying to do a song, singing, cover, something like that. But somehow I n- never got to it because I can't sing that well. I haven't found the right song and other things besides that, personally for me, I might try and do videos. I'm, I'm thinking about it, but I don't look handsome enough to be on TV. <laughs> Few people do. <laughs> it's my podcast, so the voice is there. Yeah, but it if, knows you, how Norman looks like. if you have the voice and you don't have the face, nobody's going to watch you, man. Yeah, that's the point. Nobody needs to watch you. <laughs> oh. No, sad. I mean, if you have the voice and the face, there's nothing to watch. <laughs> Unless your iPod screen with your pony sonar right there for half an hour. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, um, um, what about on, you guys? On my end, um, actually, the only collaborative effort work is, is this podcast. But on my own, I, I do some random YouTube videos. Uh, last time, I used to do old, um, old Sega game uh, playthroughs. So I played things like um, Aladdin and um, Lion King kind of games. And now, now Pony has come. I've made a few random uh, videos. Uh, one of them was a compilation of about, um, I think, was it fifteen thousand pieces of art in in th- in three minutes or something like that. I think it was the uh, draw friends, right? The five hundred draw friends kind of deal. Yeah, mm. I made a three hundred draw friends and a five hundred draw friends video, and it's pretty much random. Um, um, yeah, random videos, I guess. Very cool. I've been trying to do music, but let's just say uh, I've kind of lost a lot of my creative spirit due to work and studies. I uh, hope it comes back sometime. See, you know, Dickon, you've done you've done scripts as well, haven't you, Dan? Yeah, I have, but I haven't published them. Uh-huh. So it's under the cover scripts. Yes. Ooh, talking about scripts, I might be. I, I'm thinking about doing fan fiction. Thinking about Go it. Go for it. Yeah, but fan fiction writing is hard. I'll proofread for you. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do have a film fic account, so maybe, maybe. Oh, I got a last question for you guys. Um, since you both do art, do you guys use a tablet? And what drawing applications do you guys use? Oh, um, I use a tablet, yes. I use um, a bamboo medium-sized tablet mm-hmm. for my art. And uh, as for the software, I normally use the Paint Tool Sci. Oh. For, uh, ever since I discovered it, I, I've been in love with it. Even if it is a very bare bones application, it's very basic. It it really is good because it, it transforms you into a, a stroke master. Oh, don't, don't, put, don't put yourself it's, down, man. Because Pinto Side does Pinto Side can do really awesome work. Yes, yes, it, it can do. Uh, uh, very awesome work, but it's it's all it's all up to the to the artist, and I haven't been able to find another tool that uh, has allowed me to do such expressive work as in in painful side because the stroke stabilizer is really something. Uh, extraordinary and I love it so I'll be still using that I use GIMP as well for lettering and effects on layers oh. uh, I, I don't use Photoshop because I don't have it and I don't like pirating stuff Yar. but uh, but GIMP is pretty useful to me too mm. and and uh, when I do vector work I use Inkscape oh okay so what about you Orca? I actually have a small bamboo tablet as well, and uh, I've so far done all my art in the paint tool side as well. I, have, I haven't been doing art very very long, so I haven't really tried any, many different programs, but paint tool side has so far been everything I need. So. Oh, awesome. I, I know a lot of artists that use paint tool side. For example, we had this one guy who donated 
um, some gifts to us for our first year anniversary. And this is what he drew. Um, he uses paint to sigh, and this piece of work is really awesome. Oh yes, it's really very yeah, well that's, done. That's amazing. The the appeal of painful sigh it's is that it's very simple, it's very versatile, and um, it has that marvelous stroke stabilizer that turns even people with unsteady hands into into people who can do straight strokes, straight beautiful strokes. That's uh, it. I'm switching to side now. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it's, it's it's very good for beginners, and it's also very very versatile. But for people who want, uh, it can be a little frustrating to create certain effects in Paint Tool Side because uh, it's very bare bones. It doesn't have uh, many features. The features it does have are very good and very easy to use, but it doesn't have have many of them. So, <laughs> they try to draw a straight line. I put a ruler on my tablet. <laughs> oh no! No, from from what I remember, um, <laughs> well, that's trained it creative. No, um, from what I remember, uh, a previous guest of ours who used paint to size said that paint to size was kind of light weight on the computer side because unlike Photoshop or Illustrator, it runs really heavy for the PC or the CPU. That's what I remember him saying, and that was the appeal for him that it was. Lightweight on the CPU. Yes, yes, that 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 is that's, that is also true, but uh, I really think that most of the appeal of side has to do with the destructor stabilizer. People aren't good. Most people aren't very good at making straight, smooth strokes, and Sai helps a lot with that. I think that's the main appeal. I need to try out Sai, man. I need to try out Sai. <laughs> you do. You you feel the difference. Apparently, okay. Sai is much more popular than Photoshop. Photoshop is expensive. Yeah, true that, true that. Give for the win. Okay. okay, so now we are moving on to the next part of the podcast, which is shout outs. <coughs> so I'll, I'll I'll kick off the ball with shout outs. Uh, today, for my shout out, uh, I have to shout out to everybody at the IRC, uh, Pony Guff IRC. And there are really too many to name. Um, there is, you, know, you, you both of you guys are actually part of the IRC. So it's Mike Grey Wolf, Orchestra. Um, then there's this, um, uh, the, the comic artist, uh, Sinx, <laughs> having trouble pronouncing. Sinx 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 right. That's him. <laughs> and uh, Back, Back Pony as well. And um, Buff Buff, or Timo, who is the third member of the team. And the sixth member is uh, Ahoy Hoy, I believe. Uh, he's the gift maker and also the uh, PR personnel behind the game, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have any shout outs to give, uh, Mike? Yes. I have to give a shout out to my wonderful wife mm-hmm. and my kid also. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Miguel. And, uh, and to all my friends at Ponygaf, uh, many more than then uh, Charlie had to, the chance to, to mention. Uh, I won't be naming any, any names because I, I risk to leave someone important out. Because <laughs> now you make me look bad. How <laughs> <laughs> uh. oh, about you, Arka? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to be a bit boring and just to do the same same thing Mark did and uh, do a shout-out to all my friends at Pony Gaff and especially to Timo, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Oh, cool. Norman? I'd like to give a shout-out to you, Mike, and to you, Orca. Thank you for being on our show, our little humble show, and talking to us about video games, um, pony art, your daily life, your swags, which I'm still jealous. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> and uh, seriously, thanks thanks again, guys. Thanks again for being on. Okay. It, was, it was our pleasure. Thank you, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, uh, shout out to Mike and Orca as well for spending time with us. And a shout out to Charlie right here because it's been a while since been, he's been on and he found a great couple of guests this week. Good job, Charlie. <laughs> All right, so now we are done giving out shout outs to each other. Um, <laughs> if you've got any questions, concerns, or suggestions about the show, like how Charlie is hosting this episode for some unknown reason, <laughs> you might contact us at the nbsshow at gmail.com. Is that right, Norman? True indeed, true indeed. Okay, 
and you might uh, we and we have Twitter as well. Um, my Twitter handle is uh, at, at drcxy and Norman. Um, I'm at Norman Sanzo. And Daniel, I'm at Saint Pinky S C P I N K I E. Uh, Mike, do you have a Twitter or any other means of how the audience can contact you? My privileged uh, means of contact right now for the, the general public would be my DeviantArt gallery at mikegraywolf.deviantart.com. Right, cool. We'll put that in the show notes. And Orca, how about you? Uh, I prefer DeviantArt as well, so that, that would be Star Orca at DeviantArt. Okay. Uh, maybe we could also give out the, uh, the details to our IRC channel if someone's interested. Oh, please do. We'll put those in the show notes. To the show notes. Yes. So, um, all right. That concludes this week's well, episode. The, I, I want to know. Like, what's the IRC, man? I've, I've been waiting. Don't, don't, don't let me hang, man. <laughs> you want the IRC right now? Yeah, I mean, is, is it just a bunch of numbers or what? The IRC, it's the Ponygath channel at irc.globalgamers.net. Okay, cool. And uh, please send me the link in the chat or something because remembering that is going to be hard and I'm very derpy. <laughs> okay, if you, if you have Firefox and um, if you have Firefox and uh, the Chatzilla extension, you can uh, um, enter directly through your web browser with the, with the, the, the URL that I'm leaving you. Cool, awesome. Okay. So, that concludes this episode number 54 of the MBS show. We hope you all had a great time. We know we all certainly did. I've been your host for this episode. I'm Charlie. And I've been Norman Sanzo. And I'm Daniel Anthony. And I'm Mike. Okay. And I'm Orca. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. See you next week. Yeah, Bye-bye. Probably if I'm still alive. <laughs> Bye. Walking up to you is the hardest thing to do. And every time I look into your eyes, I forget just what to do. Deciding what to say, to run and chase my fears away. But every time I look into your eyes, nerves begin to fray. And all this time spent down, for my life to turn around. I know I'll find a way to be with you someday. And someday you'll see, you'll notice me. All the times I've tried to be right by your side About the hardest thing of all to do To try and talk with you Wishing from afar Trying to find the right star But the hardest thing of all to do Is to try and talk with you And all this time spent down for my life to turn around I know I'll find a way To be with you someday And someday you'll see You'll notice me How am I gonna act? What will I do when I'm finally with you? How will time pass us by? Stay by my side. I, I don't know, know what to do. do. I hope that you feel the same way I do. I hope you do. Must be crazy for even saying this, but I'm in love.
love with you. I look into your eyes. What a perfect surprise. You're not crazy for saying this, 'cause I love you too. In all this time spent down, for my life to turn around, and I think I found a way. To be with you someday, and today you've seen, you've noticed me. Let's move on. It's a great reference for people in production. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have derailed a little bit, but um, Norman, can we uh, move on to guest time, or you want to cover the other news topic? We will try and uh, make it super fast because the other two topics. I think we have something to say about it, especially okay. the second one. Yes. So, so <clears> I'll, I'll, I'll come up. I'll count us down, and I'll give the I'll give Wait, the Funko one. I yeah. thought we're still on. <laughs> uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 